Hi, in this short video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, Excel solution uh, for quantity discount model. So I believe at this point, you have a pretty good understanding about what EOQ is and you know what it seeks to achieve. And you also understand what is the most tricky part when it comes to quantity discount model. Therefore, you are seeking a more efficient way of searching for the solution. Okay, if you are still struggling with the conceptual part of EOQ and quantity, quantity discount model, um, it's probably a good idea to go back to watch the uh, lecture recording or read a textbook, and then uh, try to come back here and uh, watch the rest of the video. I think in that way, you're eventually saving more time. Okay, so um, this is one of the problem from your textbook. I believe it's 12.22. Um, from uh, version 13 of Heiser uh, textbook. I am gonna skip the first part because that's basically a simple EOQ problem. And I'm going to focus more on this part of the problem, which is um, basically the quantity, quantity discount model. So the first part of the problem, you will be required to calculate the EOQ, the total cost minimizing order quantity. And from here, um, it, uh, it actually enhances the problem by um, introducing an episode where the supplier uh, introduces tiered pricing policy where um, the greater quantity gets better purchasing price. Therefore, it may change your decision in terms of uh, what the order quantity is going to be as well as what is the total cost overall. So, um, uh, I think at best, the best way to solve this problem is using Excel because it allows a lot of a what if type of analysis. So I'm just going to dive right in uh, to the Excel implementation. I'm going to open Excel. Okay. So I am going to open an Excel worksheet. Okay. I'm going to copy this table. Bring the Excel back here. Uh, when I copy, I'm going to copy it as a text. Okay, I know some uh, students, if you're using MacBook, you don't see that button right away, but you should be able to find an option, uh, something called as, you know, copy paste into text option from your uh, Mac version of Excel, which will get rid of all the formatting details make the data much easier to work with. Okay, and then I'm gonna write down some of the cost parameters here. Okay, so we should have some kind of ordering cost. We should have some kind of holding cost. We should also have some kind of uh, annual demand. Annual demand. So the ordering cost, it looks like it's going to be 120 per order. The unit here is USD, right? USD per order. And holding cost, uh, it used to be $35 per unit per year. However, in the uh, second episode, it wishes to use 10% as a holding cost factor. Okay, so I'm just going to put one zero here. So this is not USD. Um, Rather, I should say this is a fraction of a fraction of unit price, right? And annual demand. I think annual demand. There is a little twist here. I be, I, I believe. So the cells are steady, indicating this is a very uh, constant demand case. 400 per month. So demand is known in advance, uh, that which is also steady. So it's going to be, uh, I will just do 400 multiply 12. Okay, which will give us units. Okay, with this set up properly, and I think, I think we're ready to proceed. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to lay down all the parameters that we need to find out the ordering quantity. OK, 
Okay, so um, holding cost, since this is a 10% of your unit price, so I'm just going to do multiply this with absolute referencing it. Okay, and I'm going to double click this green dot at the bottom of the cell. And I, I'm just gonna also going to put down the holding cost here. Uh, this is easier to work with, especially if your Excel skill is still growing. Uh, it, in this way, you don't have to actually uh, go back and forth to look up. Uh, is this is not this is called ordering cost, right? So ordering cost, because all the ordering cost will be the same. Annual demand, all the annual demand is going to be same. Okay, so and then I think we should be able to calculate the EOQ, economic order quantity, in each case. All right, and then we also need to determine the actual actual ordering quantity. Okay, so let's first figure out what is the EOQ in each um, pricing tier. So I believe EOQ is square root of 2 multiply your ordering cost with annual demand divided by your holding cost per unit per year. Um, this will give us EOQ of this. Okay. Um, so with this, we need to determine, right? We need to determine, um, as usual, I'm just going to use the green color as your decision variable. All right. Um, so, well, this is isn't exactly decision. It's not exactly a decision variable like you see from the linear programming, but this is where you need to make ordering decision, right? So, if you look at this, um, well, in order to enjoy thirty-five dollar per unit, right? Uh, your ordering quantity should be less than ninety-nine units. If your EOQ is 182 units, there's no financial incentive for you to stay with this ordering quantity. Especially if you're looking for um, you're looking to fulfill this many uh, orders. So, and also your EOQ is much bigger than uh, the maximum value of this tier. Therefore, I think we can just ignore this particular case, which you can just say this is not applicable. Right. If you look at the second scenario, second pricing tier policy, uh, 188 is right in somewhere in this uh, ordering uh, ordering uh, range. So um, I think it's safe for us to stick with this particular quantity. Okay. So I'm just going to round it up, round it up to 189. Okay, to make it a whole unit. So in this particular case, uh, as you can see that our EOQ is 195. However, the minimum quantity of this particular tier begins with a 200. Okay, so therefore 196 won't work. The minimum order you have to place in this case each time is 200. Okay, so this area, right, this column will actually need your manual inter intervention. Okay, and then with this information provided, we can actually proceed to complete the rest of the step. Okay, so for example, we can we can come out with what is total holding cost then, and then what is our total ordering cost, and then move on. What is your total cost, including products you are ordering? Okay, or maybe I should. Before I go there, total product cost. Okay, and then you have a total cost eventually. Okay, I know there's a lot of information, but if you can actually follow all the logic here, uh, it actually makes a lot of sense. Okay, so total holding cost, we can just forget, we can just ignore about this scenario. Um, it's gonna be, uh, yeah, how do you get the total, total holding cost? It's actually the ordering quantity divided by two multiply by per unit per year holding cost. Okay, so you're ordering 189 each time. 
uh, that will be the maximum inventory level. Your system in general will have half of those uh, quantity, uh, which is your average inventory level. You multiply that with your holding cost. That's your total holding cost. Okay. Again, if you're not familiar with this part, that means you you don't have a firm grip on EOQ model. Okay, uh, you should go back and take a look at that one more time. Your total ordering cost will be your total ordering cost will be your annual demand divided by number of quantity order each time. This will give you number of times you place an order, and you multiply it with your ordering cost. Boom. Okay. So I'm sorry. I think I. <laughs> Use it wrong cell? Did I or did I not? I guess I didn't. I was using a right cell. As you can see, um, this is our EOQ uh, in this particular case, but uh, your holding cost and ordering cost is not exactly the same. It used to be the same, right? Because we rounded up. That's the reason why, right? If you kind of revert it back, you can see that those are actually the same. But since we rounded up, um, it's actually a little different. But it doesn't. Uh, it it doesn't matter a lot. And your total product cost will be total demand multiply by the uh, per unit cost. Okay. Therefore, your total cost is going to be this plus this and this. This will be your total cost. Okay. And, uh, and let's repeat this step again. Or though you can just easily simply just do it. To complete it, but since this is an exercise, I'd like to spend a little bit more time thinking through this process. Okay, um, your total holding again is gonna be what? Yeah, your ordering quantity. Um, oops, it's not your EOQ. This is your order. It should be your ordering quantity, right? Uh, do it again. Your ordering quantity divided by two. This gives you your average inventory level. Multiply uh, per unit holding cost per year. So this is your holding cost. Yeah, I'm hesitating because this is lower than this. It's because your holding cost is lower because this we do that by fraction of unit price. Your unit price is cheaper, therefore your holding cost is also cheaper. Therefore, your total holding cost is also cheaper. That makes sense. OK, I just want to make sure. And total ordering cost is what? Um, again, it's going to be your annual demand uh, divided by um, ordering quantity per order. You multiply that with ordering cost, which is 120. OK, so this is also cheaper. Um, and double check. Okay. Yes, I think it's correct. Yes. And then lastly, which is your total product cost, is going to be total demand multiply by the uh, you know per unit price. And then the total cost is going to be the sum of. Sorry. It's going to be sum of all three. You can do sum. Yeah, you can do sa safely do sum. Um, so in this case, um, the third price tier actually gives you the minimum total cost, right? So if you are a decision maker, if you look at this picture, I would say, I should say, <laughs> I assume that you're a rational person, uh, you should go with the third tier. Okay, so uh, what's the big deal here? The interesting thing is that we're not sticking to uh, EOQ, right? EOQ is basically a quantity that give, uh, makes us think whether this benefits us or no. Since we're actually ordering more than the EOQ suggesting because of the pricing tier constraint we have, um, so ordering 200 is going to be our decision, which is going to be the ultimate decision that minimizes the total cost. Okay, hope that uh, helps you. Maybe you're wondering why you didn't complete this part. Well, again, I, like I said, you don't even have to think about this because your EOQ is actually much greater than uh, this quantity rank, right? So um, if this is EOQ, you have no incentive to 
restricting your order quantity to 99, right? You should just automatically automatically qualify for the second tier. Uh, so you don't even have to consider this. So why, well, let's assume that you are a totally, um, <laughs> I would, and let's assume that you are type of person don't really think a lot and then and say, oh, it's okay, let's just we'll go with 99 here. Uh, you can try to complete the rest of the steps by doing this, right? Um, it's very natural that all the cost categories, uh, you have a greater cost, right? So this means that each time you're only ordering 99 in order to uh, satisfy this pricing tier. I don't know. I don't know why would anybody do that. Uh, but again, this will give you the much bigger cost. So you won't stay here. All right. So this is the quantity discount model. As you can see that the deal here is uh, determining uh, what is the actual ordering quantity. So often you guys are confused between uh, what, what, what actual order quantity should be used uh, just because we put so much emphasis on EOQ that is total cost minimizing quantity but it doesn't mean that um, you have to stick with it under a uh, quantity discount uh, model situation okay hope that this video helps um, see you on next one